Flashforge has entered the competition of very fast mid-range 3D printers. It's such a competitive space right now, and I think this one really does hold its own, and maybe has a few benefits over some of the other ones. This is the Adventurer 5M Pro by Flashforge, and before we get into comparing it with every other 3D printer, let's go into what is this machine right here. As a full disclosure, Flashforge did send me this printer and is sponsoring this review, but I do have the actual prints here to show you how it really worked. Coming in at a release MSRP of $600, very similar to a lot of other 3D printers. It's pretty standard. Build volume is 220 by 220 by 220 millimeters cubed. Direct drive, fully enclosed. It runs a clipper-like firmware system in here and very easy to open and close. It's running a Core XY motion system. It has the internal LED, internal camera, very similar to a lot of other 3D printers out there. Dual-sided PEI plate on here, and this might be one of my favorite ones because they put this nice plastic handle on here so it makes it really easy to pull it out without touching the PEI plate because you really don't want to touch that any more than you have to. Setup is super easy, it takes about 10 minutes from out of the box. You pull the foam out of the middle and then it runs through an auto calibration and you're ready to go. 10, maybe 15 minutes and you'll be ready to print. Now when it comes to comparing the maximum speeds and accelerations between these printers, they're all really similar and it really doesn't matter what they advertise, it matters what the actual printer profile is. It's going to be using different speeds for different features around a print and they all print using their default profile. Their benchies take about 30 minutes. They can have these custom sliced ones that were faster, but generally these are all really similar printers. A few notable things that this one has, the first one is a internal and external filtration system. So if you're printing something like ABS, some high temperature filaments, you want the door closed on here and you want it to filter internally there. So you're not bringing in cold air from the outside that will take out some of the fumes of ABS or ASA, things like that. But you keep a good, nice temperature in here to get some beautiful ABS prints out of this printer. Then if you're printing cooler temperatures for like PLA, you can open up the top and use the external filter. So that will circulate in fresh air and filter the air as it's leaving. It's really cool to have both options there. When you swap between them, there's a little servo in there that opens or closes some sort of door of how the filtration is running. Another unique feature this printer has over a lot of other printers is easy swap nozzles. You press the two red triggers on the, each side of the hot end, and then the nozzle can be pulled straight out through the bottom. This is the entire hot end assembly and includes the heater and thermistor in there, along with the nozzle built into this little package. The port on the back is how the power gets to the actual hot end. Default, it is shipped with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle installed here, but in the package, you will get a 0.6 millimeter nozzle as well. Those weren't ready. This is kind of an early production unit, so they didn't send me one yet but it's in the mail, it's on the way. I'll have to make a short covering that when it does arrive. The last unique thing here is that there's an actual power button on the front of the printer. Most 3D printers, you just flip the power switch on the back and that turns on the printer. With this one, you can leave it powered on from the back. That way you're not reaching around to the back of the printer every time to turn it on and off. You can just use this power button right here to easily turn it on and off. This makes it feel a little bit more like an appliance, very easy to use. The last thing that Flashforge has done that kind of beats a lot of other companies is how well they've laid out their menu and put a lot of words stepping you through everything you're doing here. This does make it feel like a machine that would fit in well at a school, a library, somewhere that you're teaching new people how to use a 3D printer. The instructions being spelled out so well on the screen here is really nice for a beginner to learn how to swap filament, how to change nozzles, how to do things like that. So that kind of covers the specs and build quality of this printer, really well built. Now let's get onto the print quality because that's what really matters. So here we can start with the default Benchy. This is in PLA in burnt titanium. Turned out really good. This is a cool filament with a lot of sparkles, but shows off just how smooth it turned out. And here in the orange, as a comparison, this was printed on the Bamboo P1P, just to show comparison between these two printers. The Bamboo printer did have some issues with warping, but I feel like I always struggle with this bed. I think it's just older. This isn't an extensive test, it's just one print each with one filament each. So, so there's a lot of variables that can be different. I just wanted to show off that both of these printers print great. Here's the Flashforge printing ABS. This one stuck really well, had no warping issues on the bottom because of the nice fully enclosed chamber. Next we have some pre-sliced files that come on the card. This one is some sort of mold, but as you can see these layers turned out just beautifully. The input shaping is working great on this printer. Next up, here's a tolerance test. And straight off the printer, this one spun really well. All these gears worked great. Next up is this gingerbread man. It's a little bit more of a complex print. And it's nice that they do credit the original creators of these files. These are just beautiful lines through here. 
Next up, I printed this pumpkin. This was one that I sliced myself. And this one is a shiny silk PLA, so you are gonna see a little bit more ringing here. But the tolerances worked great straight out of the print. And also the bed adhesion worked great. Each of these thin lines has to stick on the bed being printed just like this. This is a really cool print. So here are the three most similar printers that I have that we can actually compare here today. There's the Bamboo Labs P1P, the Creality K1, and the Adventure 5M Pro by Flashforge. And here you can really see the evolution of printers and they all kind of build on each other and learn from the other company's mistakes. And perspective is really important here. The Bamboo P1P is the oldest one here. And when it came out, it was incredible, but a lot of time has passed now. And so there are some little things that other companies have learned from it. The Creality came one, put it in a full enclosure, and put a full touchscreen on the front. I really like that usability-wise over the P1P. It feels like a newer machine than the Bamboo one. And then more time has passed, and then the Adventurer 5M Pro comes along and I think puts a few nice features on there. The door, the top hat, is attached, so it won't fully come off. This one, it comes off and you could lose this, or you, now you have to find somewhere you want to put this. The front door on here is also glass, which is a give or take. It's nice to have, it feels fancy, but a lot of times printers are in workshops or places where people can bump it really easily. This can break on you, plastic won't. They've also added a few nice things like the easy swap nozzles, the internal and external filter system on there, and their menu. I think they've all kind of did a good job growing on each other. The P1P menu I think is the most difficult because it's a small LCD screen. You need to learn what all the icons mean. The Creality's menu I think was an upgrade from that, but there's still some times where you do need to know what you're telling it to do before you click it. Versus the Flash Forge I think did a really good job at putting a lot of text on there and spelling out everything you're doing and the instructions and how you need to do it correctly. Another really important thing when it comes to choosing a 3D printer is what slicer you're gonna be using with it. And I really like that Flashforge recommends you use Orca Slicer. It's kind of like the new hot slicer right now. It's a fork of Bamboo Slicer, which is a fork of Prusa Slicer. And it's a really cool open source slicer that's not tied to any other brands. A lot of people like the menu and layout of it. They do have their own specific slicer, but in their manual they recommend you can also use Orca Slicer. So I really like that they've chosen an open source one as their recommendation. 2023 is a really hard year to pick a 3D printer because there are so many great options and they all have different strengths and weaknesses. There's no such thing as a perfect 3D printer. They all have their flaws, but there's also a lot of really great ones this year. And since this one isn't perfect, let's talk about some of the downsides here. And the first most obvious downside is the build volume in here. It's only 220 millimeters cubed and that's Definitely the smallest one out of these three. And if you've done much 3D printing, sometimes you only need a few more millimeters. And if you don't have it, you don't have it. The next downside is the fan on the back. It is always on and always blowing to keep the electronics cool on the inside. Since it is a very enclosed back panel, it really does need that fan to keep the processor cool. So here I am with my voice being the same distance away as the fan. And it's not the loudest of fans. If you've got air filters in your room or just a general noisy space it's gonna be in, it's not a big deal. My big complaint is that it's just always on, so it's always gonna be making this noise if the printer's turned on. If it was only making this fan noise while the printer was running, I think that'd be fine. If this would turn off when the printer wasn't running, that would be amazing and I'd love it. The rest of the printer is pretty quiet, but it's just that one constant fan always running. It's one of those where it is noticeable, so I would turn the printer off when you're not using it. Versus the other printers, the Bamboo P1P, it goes silent when it's not printing, so I usually just forget and leave that one turned on. Another downside is that these proprietary nozzles are proprietary. They're custom made by Flashforge, so if you want to change out nozzles, you can't go to E3D or Slice Engineering or some other company to buy a cool nozzle and put it on this printer you've got to go through Flashforge to buy a new one. It's always a give and take when it comes to proprietary things. Sure, you can make something a lot better and really cool, but you can't use any older nozzles you have laying around. But I do really like this system, and I think this would make me change nozzles more often, which is really fun to experiment with different nozzle sizes, and this makes it really easy to do. So it's kind of in the middle. It's kind of good, but also has some downsides. Another odd thing with this printer, and I think it's just early firmware, I've Talk to the engineers about it. I can't get Orca Slicer to send files over Wi-Fi. Luckily, it does use this full-size flash drive right on the front, which is super easy to use, 
but Wi-Fi functionality is really important, and, and I am talking to them, trying to get it worked out. I will put a pinned comment down below if I get this fixed. Since I haven't been able to test that functionality, I can't comment on it, but I will have a pinned comment down there. So I think that just about wraps it up. I think this printer competes well with the other competition on the market right now, and for the right use cases, would really be an amazing printer. Let me know if you have any more questions down in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And I will have some coupons and affiliate links in the description down below. So if you are shopping for a 3D printer, using those always helps out the channel so much. As always, go out there, create something amazing today, and I'll see you in the next video.